The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Tuesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets slightly in the red right now. You're looking at an SP negative by 11 points, trading at 45.66. Quite the acceleration yesterday. We zoom in on the SPs. 915 a.m., 930, we'll call it. That was the low of the session, folks. You were down at 45.32. You close out the end of the day at about 45.80. You back things up. I mean, we are negative by 11 ticks right now folks but we're basically trading at where we were at 3 45 p.m eastern time last night so basically right at where we are uh, talking about the NASDAQ 100, you're negative by 55 points right now. Yesterday, you trade from about 14,800. We end the session at 15,150. NASDAQ 100 up about 2% yesterday. Dow, a little bit of a different story. Dow actually below where we were, yeah, below where we were at about 8.30 yesterday. Dow, a little bit of a lagger, trading 34,746. Russell, negative by two points, trading at 2,092 right now. We jumped to Bitcoin, $47,000. We'll see uh, if Bitcoin gets any attention with Mr. Elon Musk getting a lot of attention this morning. We'll jump over to that in a moment. We got crude back above 104. We were just above 105. Talk about some volatility yesterday. Crude trades from about 98.50 to above 103 towards the end of the session. We're sitting above 104 right now. Just to show you where we've been, folks, you put this on a minute. Since 9 o'clock in the morning, it is currently 9.08, folks. We're oil down a dollar. Oil moving a dollar every five to ten minutes right now. Uh, back above 104. We'll see how crude reacts. Back to a 15-minute chart on the charts. We jump to gold. Gold catching a little bit of a bid as oil pulls back. 1939. Gold's up five dollars this morning, and we jump to notes and bonds. We got a little bit of lower price and higher yield. The 10-year off 11 ticks right now. The 30-year off 21 ticks. Now the 10-year. Take a look at the daily. We're coming right back down to the lows we had on March 28th. That low, 120.30, basically 121 was the low, okay? 121, just for good memory, we're 23 ticks away from there, folks. 121.23, and we jump over to the volatility index this morning. 1927, little bit of a pop this morning, but all things considered, uh, quite the roller coaster ride. You got two roller coaster rides, folks, really. Let's back it up again. Since the beginning of the year, your first little ebb and flow around January, and then we get two big runs. The VIX runs up to 38.98, that high made January 24th. We get up to almost 38 on February 24th. We get up to 37.52 on March 8th, and then the run really slides to negative prices. It begins March 15th. If you remember, folks, that's where the NASDAQ 100, that's where all the markets began their run. The VIX goes from about 34, we're sitting in 1927, and we basically give all of it back. Talk about para, um, parabolic would be the term, but boy, we'll see where we go from here, um, because I don't imagine it going any bit lower, talking about 16, 17, 18 in this market. There is a lot of volatility uh, in this market. Now, you want to see something interesting, folks. I'm going to back things up for the VIX on a five-year. All right, I'm just going to zoom in on the action so you can see uh, the end of 2019 coming into the beginning of the pandemic. It's almost hard to remember, folks, that we had a VIX flirting with an 11, with an 11 at the beginning of 2020. Uh, things really escalating. February 19th, you're sitting at 14, okay? February 20th, you're sitting at 17. February 21st, and then over the weekend, things really escalate, and they never look back until the VIX got up to 85. Uh, something to keep in mind here, all right? I've talked about it before. Wish I had done this myself. I think it was February 28th. I tried to look on my on myself. I bought uh, some N95 masks at the beginning of the pandemic, okay? Uh, I did it February 28th. Things getting a little bit out of whack. I'm in the market, so I start to realize, hey, you know what? Uh, let's back it up to the ES. We're going to do a quick history lesson to kick off the program. Why not? Before we get into Elon Musk and his Twitter aspirations. So I'm going to zoom in on the pandemic again, okay? Uh, 
the slide begins, as I mentioned, February 20th, 21st, and then the weekend comes back February 24th. The run really escalates. Now, February 28th, this is February 20th. I believe that's the day that I bought some N95 masks, all right? The market was trading at almost 3,000, folks, okay? It had a solid 800 points to go in the S&P. It had a solid 20, what is that? What is that? 3,300 points would be 10%. Yes, you're talking about almost 30%, 27%, 26%. Still, it had to go to the downside. Point being, I wish I had listened to myself then, folks, okay? My psyche told me, Hey, you know what? Protect yourself here. Be careful. Go get some N95 masks. You probably won't need them, but guess what? The market just traded from 3,400 to 2,800. Something's going on here. You better pay attention. You better eliminate some of that risk. Got out, got some N95 masks. You know what? I, I ended up using them over the last couple of years. Um, one big box of them was enough that I was able to use them in those times that you maybe just wanted to... Uh, be extra careful for whatever you were doing around people that you want to be extra careful of or maybe your parents before you got vaccinated. Point being, boy, I really wish, and wish, wish I had listened to myself at that time. But guess what? A lot of people said, hey, you trade from 3,500, man, you touch a low of 2,800, just like that. You bounce back to 3,100. Market bounced like 10% in two days. Remember, it's, ah, maybe we're out of it. You know, maybe we're out of the woods here. No, not so fast. Down to 2,100. A good history lesson to listen to yourself, folks, when you see those things. Because, boy, if I was worried enough to be buying N95 masks, okay, I should have been paying attention enough to realize that the market might have a little bit more to go, even if it's a short-term exacerbated low. And, boy, you back things up and and talk about a run folks you basically never look back from 2174 let's zoom in what day is it exactly march 23rd okay 20th was a friday that was my birthday uh 23rd was a monday we make the low on that monday i remember all the talk over that weekend because it was my birthday weekend uh even my friends and i saying hey what's going on here i mean is the s&p really gonna go to 1700 1800 1500 no okay we had reached a low 2174 that those that had cash available at the time boy talk about a buying opportunity of a generation maybe uh you trade from 2174 we're still trading at 4567 from that run but folks uh i see those charts i see the vix reacting okay now i went over it just listen to yourself in the future because if you're young enough these types of moves uh, they only happen every so often, but boy, that was an opportunity. And we kind of knew it, folks, okay? But it was almost hard to imagine. That's the thing. You almost didn't want to imagine that life was going to change so dramatically, even though it was kind of writing on the wall. I remember when Japan first uh, sent kids home from school. It was happening, but I said to the people in my household at the time, hey, if, if it can happen in Japan, it can happen right here. And if you cancel schools for the whole country in March and you send everybody home and you tell them they can't come back to school, just that disruption alone, as we all know now, um, for people who work, people who can't take care of kids in the day, that's most people, folks. And uh, yeah, that mattered. The market reacted down to 2174. But listen to yourself when you see those things happening, if they ever come back again, because that was a lesson myself. Uh, I, I protected myself by buying some N95 masks. I did not protect myself well enough in terms of investments at that time. Um, but boy, you, you live, you learn, you move on. And yeah, we all got a lesson in a big way. But keep, keep those spikes up, folks, because, you know, you think the run is over to negative prices, folks? Boy, we got a long way to go with rate hikes, inflation, supply chain shortages, the whole deal. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. We'll take a look at Twitter. They got a new clip. Mr. Elon Musk this morning. Stay tuned. Be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's right now, negative by about nine points. Nasdaq 100 negative about 40. Dow negative 76. All the markets in the red barely after quite the day yesterday. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network with your hosts Kevin Hinks and Tom White. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through, folks, hypothetical trade setups. Okay, on the Thinkorswim platform, you're talking about options. You're talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, what a what an interesting start to the trading week, right? It's not often, Tommy, that you get to wake up on a Monday morning and get headlines from Jamie Dimon, Elon Musk, and Howard Schultz from Starbucks. And so that was a pretty interesting day yesterday. And now we're in day two of Elon Musk making headlines with, with Twitter as now he has been added to the board. So pretty crazy price movement and the stock let's face it you know twitter was pretty much left for dead for a while there and now not only did he energize twitter but he energized all the social media companies all rallied yesterday facebook uh pinterest snap they were all higher on elon musk getting involved so apparently tommy elon musk can walk chew gum juggle and ride a unicycle all at the same time with everything he's got on his plate well, Kevin, as we know, you don't become the richest uh, man in the world or woman in the world without knowing what you're doing. Uh, he's, he's, listen, he's, you know, people will say that he's manipulating markets, not even talking about Twitter, right? You go to Doge, whatever, whatever the deal is. But no matter what, man, I am saying that he is an astute investor because I got a chart up here, Kevin, of Twitter on a five year weekly. And uh, yeah, it's been below that price level. I guess it goes back to $14.12 as far back as the beginning of this chart, which is five years ago in 2017. But all things considered, getting in near 30, man, that's an area that it's bounced pretty well over the last couple of years. Did make it down on the COVID lows to 20 bucks. But just like that, man, just even, you know, it's a remarkable the amount of money he has, Kevin, to take the position he took in Twitter, um, about like 1% of his net worth, man. That'd be like somebody worth a million dollars taking a $10,000 stake in a, a, you know, hey, kudos to him, man. If you got that kind of cash, you want to throw it around and you want to do it at a level that I think it's up like $17, 18 bucks, depending on where he got in. Uh, 
not a bad chunk of change, man, with Twitter trading at 54 bucks. And I just can't wait to see where it goes because he's got a board seat now to 2024. And uh, he already loves Twitter, man. He's going to love it even more now, uh, I, I assume so. Aside from Twitter, Kevin, as you talked about, some pretty interesting stuff yesterday with Jamie Dimon. Um, we go forward. We're going to get CPI data next week, man. Uh, bank earnings starting shortly after that. Well, what are you looking at in this market, Kevin, as we come into a new earnings season and we come into the Fed, of course, coming up? Yeah, pretty slow uh, week in terms of economic data. A lot of secondary. But I think there could be some fireworks tomorrow with the release of the Fed minutes. Tommy, remember, this is a Fed meeting where James Bullard dissented even when they were raising rates. He dissented. So I think the bonds right now and yields are moving on anticipation of a, of a pretty explosive release of the Fed minutes tomorrow. Now, that's old. You know, it's news from 10 days ago or two weeks ago, but it's still going to move the market, I think. So besides that, yeah, we're waiting for more inflation data, but not a lot to uh, chew on here in terms of economic data. So I think the Fed minutes tomorrow will move the market. That said, we're going to cover some of the – the headline makers that we didn't cover yesterday, like Tom White and I will look at Starbucks in the A nice. block today. Uh, we're going to do some retail. Uh, like Foley was going to go over some retail stocks like TJX and Ralph Lauren that got downgraded. And then we'll look at uh, UPS in the third segment today. So we'll, we'll cover Starbucks and see what Howard Schultz did on his first day with the company, like uh, suspend the, the uh, stock buyback. But, We'll see. You know, there, there's a lot to do today as we get ready. Only a couple days away, Tommy, of the start of earnings season again. Yeah, interesting, Kevin. We've talked about it before. You made some great points uh, when that first came out that Schultz was stepping back in as the interim CEO. No real succession plan there, which is interesting for a company like that when they've had so long uh, to plan for it. But Schultz, you can't deny what he's done with this company. He stepped back in a couple times. Interesting that he steps back in. Not many interim CEOs would have uh, the power to say, we're just stopping those buybacks, even though I'm interim. Uh, in the long run, it'd be interesting to see in terms of where he's going to take that company. But in the short run, I think they got another downgrade today. So they're down about a buck fifty from 88 to 86. Um, but boy, his leadership at that company, man, in the long term, I was talking about, Kevin, it'd be interesting to see because buybacks in the short term, investors love him, man. Give me that cash, right? In the long term though man sometimes you gotta spend some of that capital and maybe that's what schultz is looking at we'll find out of course but the stock lower today uh getting back to the fed for a minute kevin so you know the numbers we've talked about the inflation numbers they're not going down this month man they're probably not going down next month just broadly kevin right where where do you look to because i think you know it's almost like We've talked about it before. I love your term, video game numbers. The CPI numbers are just crazy right now, and they're going to be crazy year over year right now. Is there a number, you know, that we go two or three months down in the road that things are going to become really interesting again, that it's kind of up in the air? Because it's, in my opinion, it's, it's not up in the air right now. You know, the numbers are going to be very, very harsh for inflation, which is why a lot of people think, like Bullard, 50 basis points has to be it, right? I have friends in the industry that say it's 50 basis points at the next two meetings at least. You have City saying 50, 50 at the next four. But I think the numbers are really going to start to get interesting in the next like three or four months. What are you looking for as we go down the line where there is kind of more unknown than there might be, you know, when we get CPI data like next week? From a trading perspective, Tommy, a lot of the rhetoric that you just mentioned is out there in the marketplace and getting priced in, right? Once a stock or a future or a bond makes a move, a trader's thinking about, well, I, I want to, I want what's 30 to 60 days out? I want the next move. I want to get that one right. This one's already happened. You know, you, it, a lot of the news that's come out, right? I mean, you've got a 10 year already to two, four, five. So that's pricing in a lot of rate hikes already. So what you're looking for is more acceleration in inflation or a tapering. You know this next one's going to be big, but expectations are for that to be big. And when that gets built into the market, sometimes there's a little counter trend move when the news actually comes out. So, yeah, next week when we get a CPI number, that will be a uh, pretty significant trading day in the market and how bonds, notes, and yields react to that move because we know it's going to be big. The expectations are skyrocketing for that number. What's the actual number that comes out, Tommy? 
Yeah, I think last month when they were coming out for February CPI, we got the number from March, Kevin, I think gas prices were up like 6.6%, something like that. And that represented like a, a third of the whole CPI number. And we know gas prices, man, through the right. roof, let alone the core ingredients to CPI, just staggering numbers on the core level that we haven't seen in a while as well. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, man, as always. We'll be watching at 12 noon Eastern time today. We can't wait for the program, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time with the amount of volatility right now and variables in play in this market. Check out the program. Outstanding program. We're coming into earnings season yet again uh, as we come into the new quarter, April 5th. Remarkable. S&Ps right now. We got three and a half minutes to go until the opening bell, folks. S&P's negative by 11 right now, trading at 45.66. We jump over to maybe the headline of the day. Mr. Elon Musk, uh, a new board member on Twitter until 2024. So he's got some time there. Uh, we'll go over that. He can. He agreed to not get more than 15% as well. Stay tuned, we're right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We do have markets open, and you got the S&Ps right now opening basically where we were pre-market. You're negative by 11 points. You got the Russell sneaking into the positive right now by one point. NASDAQ 100 negative by 38. Those growth stocks, man, rocking higher. Let's check in on the FANG stocks. Amazon trades almost 100 bucks higher, folks. We close out Friday 
3266. We end the session yesterday at about 3366. This morning, you're down about 12 bucks. That's half a percent lower. Uh, we jump over to Microsoft shares. Down about two tenths percent. Little volatility. Look at that volatility in the open on Microsoft. You jump over to Apple shares right now, uh, giving back some of it. Down about four tenths percent. Google shares basically flat. Look at that charge higher on Google yesterday. Right on the open, man. All these stocks just accelerating higher to begin yesterday's action uh, to the upside. Now, let's check in on Twitter. Yeah, it's not stopping. Up another 8.8%, man. Remarkable. This equity. Um, pulling up, you know, let, let me find, I was going to pull up one tweet in particular. All right. Let me see if I can get this one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here because so March 14th, he acquired over 5% of Twitter. Let's back this up to get the exact here. In terms of the regulatory filings, the problem with this, right, is that you have the richest person in the world basically manipulating markets, uh, not following the regulations that are built to protect investors, okay? Uh, March 24th, the 13G filing was due. March 25th, Musk puts out a poll on Twitter talking about the consequences are important, talking about free speech is essential to functioning democracy. Uh, and then April 4th, he files the 13G, 11 days late. Okay, so now March 14th, folks, all right? He is no fool, okay? Look at where this is on the chart. You're telling me he's not trading this for profit, okay? He is not a fool, all right? He's, he's trading pretty technically here, all things considered. You look at this low. There's March 14th, folks. There's March 14th, okay, acquiring over 5% of the company. March 14th, it was trading at 32 bucks. It's trading at $53 right now. I think he had 73 million shares, all right? Every 10 bucks, you're making $730 million. He's made about $1.5 billion on this position already. He's up $20 on a $33 equity. Uh, but they're going to look at this stuff, okay? Because they have to, because he's the richest person in the world. And there's no excuse that he doesn't know the regulations with what he's dealt with, folks, okay? If the richest person in the world doesn't have the ability to be informed of the regulations they must follow, when you literally try and almost take over a public stock uh, and exhort your will upon them, that is why these regulations exist. And unfortunately, that is getting lost in all of this because it's so tantalizing what Elon is doing uh, and how Twitter's been in the headlines. So hopefully it gets some attention. Uh, a friend of mine joking this morning, good luck to the general counsel of Twitter now having to deal with their board member being Elon Musk. We'll see how that shakes out. I would be happy as a Twitter investor, that's for sure, okay? Uh, he is a very bright man, and he cares about his money. And just like I said, he's getting down in here, but be careful, folks, okay? Because we've seen the runs that equities can have or cryptos can have when Elon gets in there. Um, yeah, and they did at 13D. I mean, I'm not gonna get into it all exactly. I mean, the, the filing that they had in there, was that he was a passive investor, which is not true at all, because he was not going to be a passive investor. We all know that. He's a board member. Board members don't have passive. They're not passive investors. Not surprising he ended up there. So there's a lot going on in how he amassed almost a 10% position, um, didn't file it. And yeah, it is part of the discussion. Part of the agreement with the board seat is that he will not acquire more than 15% of the equity, maybe more than 14.99. He will not reach 15% ownership of Twitter. That was the deal that they kind of worked with Musk to make sure that they bring him on board uh, without being battling it out with him. Probably the smart move from Twitter executives not to go to war with Elon Musk, the richest man in the world with 10% ownership and the biggest owner of your company. But it doesn't detract from the games that he played um, and, and the lack of regulatory filings and the lack of correct regulatory filings, okay? Elon Musk is wealthy enough that he could have said, just find me a lawyer that tells me what I have to do to file the regulatory filings when I'm going to go after a public company and buy almost 10% of the shares. Either he did that and didn't follow their advice or he just didn't do that. Uh, ignorance is not an excuse when it comes to breaking the law, folks, especially for the richest man in the world that has all 
that he needs at his fingertips. All right, we'll leave it at that. Twitter shareholders, you got to be excited, man. But be careful because you are trading at levels that no longer are based off the fundamentals of this company. When you trade to 38 to 54, Bloomberg had a nice little segment this morning. Um, Jonathan Farrow saying, listen, this is a story stock now. All right, story stocks do great. They also fall from the skies, as we've seen. So be careful of that one, man. You just traded from 38 up to 54, uh, let alone where you were on March 14th, which is 32 up to 54. That is a $22 pop on a $32 stock, folks, okay? We all deal in fundamentals and technicals. If you're a technical trader, the Fibonacci retracement that is possible, let's just do it real quick, all right? We go to March 14th. Just from where Elon got in when he got his 5% stake, we take the Fibonacci level from where we are right now. A 3A2 gets us back to almost the, the opening uh, or the low of yesterday, 46 bucks. But guess what? That is a good $7 from where we are right now. That's a 15% haircut, and that's just back to the 3A2 if you're still if you're bullish on Tesla. Okay, let's jump around to what other equities we got moving this morning. We'll jump around the line. Carvana, they're downgraded to sector perform from outperform at RBC. Um, price target, 138 from 155. Valuation and potential difficulty in integrating its recent acquisition of car auction company, Adessa. So I remember when they did that, they got a boost. Uh, that was one of the biggest car auction companies out there. CVNA is their symbol. And you open basically down 4.7% right now. Quite the pop higher yesterday. <coughs> Excuse me. And yeah, so they put a price tag of 138 from 155. You're sitting at 126 down from 376. You want to talk about stocks with stories, man. 376, a little lofty, even if they have changed the game in, uh, in buying. And it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because just from a consumer's perspective, car buying is always a little bit daunting, right? You don't want to get fleeced. That's the real deal. I just want a fair deal when I walk into a car dealership. And unfortunately, that's very hard to get because transparency of where true supply and demand really equal out, especially right now with used vehicles, very difficult to understand as a consumer with such limited data as opposed to the car sellers with all the data on the other side of that. The cool thing about Carvana is you're not getting screwed. You got a price, you want it or you don't. That's the price they're selling at. They're selling it to you or the next person or the next guy or the next woman that walks in. At least you have that and it gets delivered. So I imagine this area is going to accelerate, but boy, not at 376. There's already competitors I'm seeing their ads. What is it, Vroom maybe? There's another competitor just like Carvana. I said, yeah, um, they realize that there's going to be more players than just Carvana in this type of an industry. And yeah, it's going forward, but not quite yet in Carvana, another downgrade, 4.2%. Remarkable that you're almost back to where you were pre-pandemic levels. We had a high of 115 pre-pandemic in Carvana. We're trading at 127. We got a couple other equities with news to go over. We get the S&Ps flat right now. NASDAQ in the red, Dow in the green. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up by one. NASDAQ 100 slightly in the red by 76. You got the Dow catching a bit up 101, kind of a reversal of yesterday. Yesterday, you had the NASDAQ 100 popping up in the open. Check out the pop on the Dow, man. Talk about a move. We just traded from 34,700 up 230 points right on the dot, man, accelerating higher. 34,941 and at the same time, a little bit of a sell-off going on in the NASDAQ. We jump back over to Twitter. Uh, up 5.6%. You give back some of it here. So to look it up because there was chat in the den, all right, and just trying to get it exactly. Uh, there is the 13D and there is the 13G, okay? Those are what you file. When an investor acquires more than 5% of a class of publicly traded securities, when you do that, you have 10 days in which to alert the SEC via a Schedule 13D or 13G. Now, 13G is very similar to a 13D, except for one major factor. The person who now owns more than 5% of securities is a passive investor and not interested in pursuing an activist agenda. agenda. I want to bring this back home because nobody's talking about it. And I don't get why nobody is talking about the richest man in the world not following financial regulations yet again. Okay. Now, my understanding is, is that on March 14th, Elon Musk acquired over 5% of Twitter. Okay. Ten days from then was the SEC regulation that it was due to file a 13G or D. Okay. Now, again, the 13G is when you have no activist agenda he really should have been filing a 13d folks because we all are aware that he definitely had an activist agenda okay now he's going to argue the contrary i'm sure he's got a team of lawyers ready for that already all right uh, but the point being is no matter what that was due april 24th on eight uh, excuse me let's do it again he acquired it on march 14th march 24th that form is due 10 days after he has a five percent stake march 25th he is out there polling Twitter, okay, about consequences of the poll being important to vote carefully. Do you believe Twitter rigorously adheres to the principle of free speech being essential to a functioning democracy? April 4th, he finally files the 13G 11 days late, claims he is a passive despite clear intent to influence Twitter management. I mean, it's just pretty reckless and i can't believe no one's talking about it. so i do again march 14th five percent ten days later 
He has to file, doesn't file it. What's he doing? He's polling Twitter on March 25th. Finally, he files it on April 4th, but he files it in a manner that says he's passive. And then, yeah, here we are today, and he's got a board sheet, seat, and he's saying he won't take 15%. Um, just didn't follow the regulations at all, folks. And I don't know how else to say it. Hopefully somebody covers it. Hopefully something's done about it. Because the richest, if the richest man in the world doesn't have to follow financial regulations as he comes after companies with an activist agenda, that is not going to be good for anybody, folks, in the market, okay? He can do that to almost any single company. I did it before. Elon Musk is worth hundreds of billions of dollars. This stake in Twitter was only like a couple billion, 2.9 billion, something like that. It's basically 1% of his worth, okay? And it's not like that money is being spent and thrown away. He's investing it. Imagine if you're worth a million dollars, and all you got to do is take a $10,000 position in Twitter to have basically the whole company OK, bow down to you. And that's what Elon Musk was able to do. And he didn't even have to follow the proper regulations to do it. I mean, I can't harp on it enough. It's a shame that more stories aren't being written uh, of him just flying in the face of financial regulations in the process of exerting his will over public companies. Yeah. And listen, it might be the best thing for Twitter, but it doesn't change the fact that he's not following the regulations. And he if he isn't able to follow the regulations, then who is, folks? Okay, he has more resources than anybody. He's probably one of the brightest guys in the whole planet, all right? And if he's going to claim ignorance, which is probably what he's going to claim, all right, then that's a problem for the financial world because if that starts breaking down, investors will be hurt, consumers will be hurt, uh, and that's what they're there for. Okay, keep that in mind. All right, let's jump down the line. Some of the other stocks are moving. Generac, this one's an interesting one. Uh, <clears throat> they're put on the America's buy list at Goldman Sachs, point to a broad product portfolio, increasing distribution footprint, and the idea that many of Generac's products in the early stage of adoption, GNRC. Now, it's interesting here. This is the generator company, of course, from 296 to 325. I'm going to back it up on a five-year weekly, man. You talk about a run during COVID, all right? Even backing up further. Let's put it on a monthly. Go all the way back, man. This thing, uh, what, you're at 30 bucks in 2015. This thing, it can live and die as we come into the summers, man, depending on the storms and what they get. I mean, look at 2017. You're trading at 36 in July. By the time you get out to October, you're trading at 52, let alone the run that we've had in COVID. Now, just zooming in, I'm going to put this back on a three-year weekly. I mean, the run we've had from the COVID lows right to the 618, folks. I've been pulling it up a lot. There are a lot of charts right now at a 618. I think I took a look at Starbucks yesterday. I think I took a look at Logitech yesterday right at the 618. You have Generac pulling back almost to the 618, the low of 251.74. I got a 618 in my chart at about 249. So within a couple dollars, we're up 3.1% today. Uh, and I agree in terms of basically... Living in Florida, folks, uh, we're coming into the summer. We're very fortunate the last couple of years. We are very fortunate being kind of on the west coast of Tampa, uh, west coast of Florida, that we're a little bit hidden, right? The storms to get us, they kind of have to come in the Gulf and do a boomerang back onto the west coast of Florida. It can happen. It's more difficult. The poor people in the panhandle, man, those storms that go into the Gulf and just ride up to the panhandle. That's a tough one. Of course, the east coast of Florida, the storms coming right in from the Atlantic is tough. But yeah, we're coming. And I tell you, <clears throat> you're building houses. You got the ability to put one of these things into your home. I would be doing it right now. I imagine they are going to be adopted at a much greater rate moving forward. So yeah, anecdotally myself, being in Florida, <coughs> excuse me, I imagine there's some value there in Goldman. They're agreeing. Carnival, this is what I want to get to. Check out this stat. Carnival. The cruise line operator said the seven-day period from March 28th to April 3rd was the busiest week for new cruise bookings in the company's history. I imagine they've had some pretty good weeks with sales, etc. cetera, okay? Uh, that may be a marker, folks. You know, I've been waiting for some of these cruise ships. Maybe you're finally catching a bid. I mean, look at how these trends, you know, not so much the trend channel line, right? Trying to find some trends in here. Uh, wasn't an upward channel until things went a little bit awry back in October of last year. We're going to delete those channel lines because that ain't the channel that it's in anytime soon. We're going to back things up. Let's delete, delete that one as well. Remove that drawing. Let's remove that one as well. We're going to back it up to a three-year weekly. And yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, the, the channel is probably... Still heading lower, right? I mean, it lines itself up, man, so be careful here, all right? 
But boy, when I see that on a fundamental basis, folks, and geez, to get the parallel line, not sure they're going to match up too completely. But yeah, you get the point, all right? We are just in the upper boundary line, basically, of the downward channel that we have been in, basically, since uh, July of 2021. But boy, eventually, folks, to put this in some context here, you come into COVID at about 50 bucks, we're sitting at 21, and they just had more bookings than they've ever had in a week. And maybe that's it. Maybe finally people are ready to make those cruises. Uh, it's April coming into the summer. Nonetheless, Carnival, that's a pop for you. 8% folks up to 2128. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by three, NASDAQ 100 negative by 105. A little bit of a reversal from yesterday's action. Uh, growth stocks pulling back. We'll check on the FANG stocks real quick. We'll kick it off with the big dog, Apple. Apple shares down about half a percent right now. We'll put things back on a 15 minutes to see the action. Google shares. Ah, slightly in the red as well. You see it, though, compared to yesterday's pop, no huge action. Microsoft shares giving back some of the gains off about half a percent as well. We jump to Amazon shares off a full percent right now. Uh, jumping back to Carnival real quick, as we jump around, look at this thing skyrocketing. The one thing I will say, and maybe this is the breakout, man, because you're getting some volume. Uh, leading up to today, though, okay, these lows, they got all the volume, man. Look at the low in July. 
market accelerates lower into carnival right look at the low that it had in december talk about some volume at the lows man no matter where you are the volume you're doing 60 70 80 million shares 82 million shares at the low and then you got the low in march pushing on dramatic volume as well we're rising now here's the thing though today's volume already 20 million shares and we're only 25 minutes into trading you're up 8.2 percent and don't undercount folks a statistics like selling more cruisers than they've ever sold in a week at the end of march i talked about it when i got covid uh beginning of february okay a lot of people like myself man that was the last haul right you got it some natural immunity maybe you had kids in the household uh that allows them some possibility maybe you're just more comfortable with where everything is in society to break back up but nonetheless carnival catching the bid up 8.3 percent uh kind of a little bit of a dichotomy here where you're pushing the upper boundary of the channel line you just traded from 15 bucks up to 22 that's a 50 percent acceleration folks in basically a month uh keep your eye on the volume though as i said volume near the lows all right folks we got our man basil chapman coming up next and don't forget if you haven't checked out the tiger's den at discord folks check it out on the front page it's only a dollar got great conversation great tigers and tigresses in there every day chatting about the market even after hours uh you can use it on your mobile phone on your tablet a lot more accessible so people are in there outside of market hours when they're not at their computer and our man basil chapman a week from tomorrow folks opening call subscribers a 90 minute webinar we will be using discord for that as well it's a great platform going to allow some real functionality for mr that's yet folks check it out 30 days of the opening call Put it back guarantee as of next folks stay tuned have a great tuesday